Good morning, parents. Great to be here at the <laughs> Swedish House of Finance. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to, to speak with you today. Uh, why all the interest? Well, uh, first, people are reimagining uh, payments. The, the old rails are uh, under uh, aggressive uh, competition from new rail providers. And uh, I think the key catalyst was several years ago when a large uh, tech firm called Facebook, now called Meta, uh, discussed the introduction of a private cryptocurrency to be used for payments. Now, given that Facebook has an installed base of over a billion users globally, central banks suddenly became very concerned. Uh, what would this mean in, in terms of the safety and soundness of the payment system? What would, it, what would it mean in terms of concentration of market power where a tech firm could uh, provide uh, other technology services using payments as, mm. a, uh, as a way to concentrate its market power? So immediately central banks began investigating central bank digital currency. Once they did, uh, each started to follow what the other was doing, and particularly China introducing already its central bank digital currency has enlivened uh, not only the global discussion, but it's accelerated central bank development of CBDCs to the point where now 105 countries globally are exploring uh, CBDCs and stable coins uh, are being uh, uh, carefully considered for regulation. Uh, I think uh, consumers around the world are getting a pretty good experience uh, in terms of their own payments uh, services, but uh, they're paying prices uh, that reflect the cost in the back end to merchants and others and the delays that merchants are experiencing. And so new payment service providers are hoping to disintermediate some of those bank rails. Uh, uh, it's it's uh, a topic on the tip of the tongue of central bankers and commercial bankers and payment service providers everywhere now. Well, in some countries, uh, central bank digital currencies will be replacing paper cash. And so those grubby bits of paper that you're carrying around will not be needed anymore. And that would be uh, a nice experience for many. But in Sweden, in Sweden, that would in, not be the case. In Sweden, you, you already <laughs> have gotten rid of paper cash. Yeah. I'm, I'm having trouble using up my old paper cash <laughs> here in Sweden. Yeah. Uh, and I think the payment experience for consumers will not be that much different with uh, the fact that you have Swish and a very advanced payment system. In Sweden, a CBDC will, will not change uh, all that much on the consumer side. It has been said, though, that a motivation is to make sure that uh, people in Sweden always have access to a trusted official money mm. and it would provide that foundation. Uh, so that's one, that's one aspect of it. Another aspect uh, is that access to a CBDC could provide more competition for banks. So it could uh, mean that banks have to compete harder both for payment services and for deposits, the payment medium uh, in Sweden. They might have to pay higher interest rates on deposits. And so that could change the experience for uh, Swedish consumers and Swedish banks quite significantly. Well, uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, Sweden is vulnerable in the sense that it's a small open economy and it's possible that euros or dollars that are carried in a very convenient stable coin or a CBDC could start to become uh, commonly used inside Sweden. However, uh, no in the sense that Sweden already has a very advanced, uh, effective uh, payment system, sure. both in terms of the strength of its banks and also the payment services provided through Swish and uh, other fast payment services in Sweden. So I think Sweden is going to be safe for the time being, but many other countries that are open and have weaker uh, banking systems or weaker payment systems are extremely vulnerable uh, to currency substitution. They may lose their monetary sovereignty. It's happened in the past already uh, with paper dollars in some emerging market economies, like Argentina, for example, or uh, with bank deposits, which in Cambodia essentially replaced the vast majority of, of bank deposits with U.S. dollar deposits. So if I, if I were uh, working at a central bank in a smaller open economy, especially in the emerging markets, I would be thinking about getting a central bank digital currency or a, 
mm. highly interoperable fast payment system up and running so that every uh, consumer and business in my economy was very happy uh, with the payment experience and the cost of payments in my mm. country. Uh, so, so true, Pair, because uh, you know, a central bank relies on the ability to slow down or speed up its economy by, cha by changing by uh, changing central bank interest rates. But if your businesses and consumers are not using your own currency, then your central bank uh, monetary policy becomes irrelevant. I do think that a country like a large country like the United States or a large currency zone like the eurozone is going to face a dilemma at some point on currency competition. On the one hand, they would uh, uh, use of their currencies internationally would shore up the strength of their currency as a uh, payment medium and lower their costs of funding and protect them from uh, loss of currency sovereignty. Uh, and they will have an incentive to compete against each other. Mm. On the other hand, it's incumbent on large developed market economies to reach international agreement uh, that would mitigate this problem of currency competition. It should be hands off in terms of invading the monetary sovereign uh, sovereignty of smaller open economies. There should be uh, agreements, let's say, at the G20 level or at the BIS uh, uh, level, mm. uh, CPMI, IOSCO, for example. Uh, there should be agreements to protect the monetary sovereignty of smaller countries. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Pear. We're at a crossroads right now. It's, it's early, but uh, some important decisions are going to be made in the next few years. Uh, what will be the future uh, of money, of electronic mm. money? Will it be CBDCs? Will it be improved bank rail payment services with instant payment services being available to all on very simple and interoperable apps? Will it be cryptocurrency-based payments? How will cross-border payments be made? Mm. All of these questions are, very, are in the very early stages of exploration. And it's a question not only of technology, but of policy exploration. Uh, 105 countries exploring CBDC and at the same time deciding how to regulate cryptocurrencies, mm. at the same time deciding how to deploy their fast payment systems. So the next two years are going to make uh, a very, very big difference in the future. Will we have... Uh, 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 a common interoperable, uh, highly advanced payment system? Will we have smart contracting allowing the payment services to uh, uh, integrate with the Internet of Things? What about uh, security settlement and foreign exchange settlement? How will our payment systems integrate, particularly in the cross-border area, which is a severe pain point now? I'm not sure about you, Pear, but whenever I have to send money to a friend or receive money from uh, expense reimbursement from another country, it's kind of a nightmare in terms of how long and how hard one has to work to get those payments. And then when you find out that you got 10% less than you were promised because of fees and uh, various payment services that uh, came along the way, uh, you can't imagine that this situation will persist mm. for many more years. So I can't wait to see what happens in the next 10 years. <laughs> Yes, I, I completely agree with uh, the governor of your central bank uh, that uh, the questions that uh, some of the questions uh, that are being asked today have been around for a long time, mm. uh, from the times at which banks were issuing their own paper currencies, and central banks were then in many countries given a monopoly over the issuance of currencies. Uh, uh, the, the, the reliance on a trusted uh, currency, a highly interoperable and trusted currency, is a linchpin to the efficiency of an economy. How, I mean, after all, how can you run an economy if you don't trust your payments and if you can't make payments easily and cheaply? And uh, all of a sudden, we're back into the debates again over uh, what will be the future of uh, digital currencies yeah. and payments. Yeah. So uh, I think we're going to be facing lots of the same questions. A famous uh, banking economist at Columbia University, Charles Calamiris, uh, once told me when I uh, I indicated uh, innovation in banking. He said, well, it's very unusual to find uh, a banking innovation that hasn't already been done um, <laughs> uh, long ago. Yeah. Yeah. 
Daryl Duffy, thank you very much for, for this conversation. These are, are important and fascinating problems. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Per, for the opportunity to speak with you today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.